Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have a new breakthrough of the Ukrainian army towards the Kursk Oblast. It's been reported that Ukraine covered several of the kilometers to counter-strike the Russian army. Yes, there are two of the counter-attacks, one performed by the Russian army and now Ukraine strikes from behind. I'll link this original source of the Noel reports in the video description just below, so you may check it out yourself. Yet there is no update from the deep state military map, but we have the visual confirmation later on I'm gonna show you everything. There are two of the defense lines of the Russian army here in the region. One is right at the border and the other one, as usual, is further away. Now, I must say 100% that Ukraine has penetrated the first defense lines and moving to encircle the Russian group, which is now counterattacking the Ukrainian army in this part of the front lines. There are absolutely no doubts that Russia will be forced to make a U-turn to counteract to this possible threat. Yes, it's not possible, it actually exists. At the same moment, Ukraine still has some of the reserves, which it might use to hit Russians also from this side. So it's the great probability for the Russian army to be trapped on the south part of the Kursk region. Also, don't forget that here is also the border with the Ukraine. Ukraine also has potentially forces near Konstantinivka. So it may start the attack from the third vector anytime. Now, guys, just look at this place. Hope you can see it correctly. So we have the drone video. I'll show it to you just in a moment. And this is the place where the Russian defense line here, it's shown in red, was penetrated by Ukraine. Plus, it's been reported that the Ukrainian army moved in this area towards Medvezhia and the presence of Ukrainian army is confirmed in this settlement. We don't have the video of how the Russian defense was penetrated here, maybe it's not yet been published or even filmed, but we have the confirmation from this side 100%. So here you see the engineering vehicle and the Ukrainian probably T-80 tank or maybe T-64 and the engineering vehicle is moving the Dragon T's which Russia built to stop the Ukrainian offensive. The Ukrainian infantry also crossed this line. You may think that, oh, it was the easy penetration of the Russian defense. You can easily move those Dragon T's with the help of engineering equipment and move with your infantry and tanks. But in fact, it wasn't that easy. Ukraine started the attack yesterday yesterday and there were the fights in this area for all that day. Initially Ukraine went there just with the infantry forces because it was impossible to use the vehicles yesterday, but today after Russians were pushed, yes, our guys moved there with engineering equipment and vehicles, so it's the second stage of offensive. Which already tells that it's not the regular sabotage operation, no, it's the full-scale military attack. Because of it, the Russian military bloggers are now concerned about their counter-offensive on the western flank of the Kursk battlefields. In Kornova direction for Russia it's more or less safe, I would say. This is the grey area expansion that happened yesterday. Russia claimed that they've took around 8 of the villages as for this hour. Judging on some of the images they share in internet, definitely there are some of the villages under their control, which they retook from Ukrainian army. But we are not even close to speak about the major disaster for the Ukrainian army with the Kursk operation. From the tactical perspective, this operation was successful for Ukrainian army. Whether it's successful from the strategic point of view, well, only time may show. From the Russian channels we see that there is some fire from the Russian artillery. However, I don't see lots of the Russian forces in the settlement. Usually they show those pictures from the drones, saying that they've took the village under control, but no, it's very hard to confirm it. There is a big fog of war in the Kursk region. Mostly who shares this data is the Spetsnaz Ahmad. In most of the cases, they shared the disinformation about the settlements taken. Just yesterday, they told that they've took 10 of the settlements to day 15, something like that. Russians also shared those kind of the maps, saying that they are up to encircle the Ukrainian group in this place. But they share no confirmation that, for example, Snagast was taken by the Russian army. Or, for example, the Blachova village. In that case, it would be critical for Ukraine. But they shared the visual confirmation, I mean those drone images, just from this place and here. The fight there in those places continued for more than two weeks. And there is absolutely no evidence that Russia advanced and took Snagast or, as I say to you, this Blachov village, creating the small bottleneck for Ukrainian army. 
it's absolute nonsense for this hour and misinformation guys if you want to support the job that i do on youtube daily you may also consider join me on patreon the link for my patreon page is available in a video description just below thank you so much for maintaining my motivation this map is from the institute for the study of war but usually it's not that correct and they share the claimed territory so russia claimed that they've took snagast and here you see this red area but it's not what is on the ground no one actually knows what is there but some of the information we may only confirm with the drone videos published in the internet plus the jet located position snagist wasn't in any of the drone videos again for this hour while i'm filming this video guys i told you that russian forces were mostly cut from the supplies in this region but apparently again with the heavy losses russia sent more and more patent engineering equipment to make many of the bridges across the seine river yes ukraine does its best to spot those bridges and immediately annihilate them but it's not always like that sometimes russia has enough time to deploy the bridges and send the reinforcements but let me show you some of the screenshots of the case where russians were not so successful well here we have it russia put the pattern bridge they have some of the vehicles and infantry this bridge was spotted by ukrainian surveillance some of the russian forces were already on the other shore and some tried to cross the bridge using the vehicles because russians were in a hurry they didn't put the bridge properly and there was the issue for the russian forces to send their vehicles for infantry it's not a problem but here you can see the big displacement so russians tried to figure out how to get to the bridge and to get get out from it safely with their vehicles and not to drown them into the river. By the time they were thinking about how to deal with the issue, you can see that Ukraine struck them with a cluster munition, probably even a Takams shell. Yes, United States said before that Ukraine might use a Takams within 100 kilometers range from the Ukrainian border. And this place is within the range, so there are no issues about it. The Russian forces were totally annihilated with the strikes. The remaining of the Russian soldiers, for unknown reason, gathered together again in the local forest. And Ukraine struck them again with attack ammunition. I am sure that it was the attack ammunition cluster warhead. You may see those clusters all around, so the big group of the Russian army was just caputed with the help of Atakams. I'm sure about it, because if you watch the video, well, this part over here, it lands first. It's kind of the big one for GMLRS standard missile for the harmless system, so I'm sure it was Atakams. And later on, there was the hail full of those cluster grenades. And just to mention the Russian military airfields, this area is quite big. It means that just few of those missiles may disable all of the Russian airplanes, in particular airfield. At the same time, Zelensky says that everything in Kursk goes according to Ukrainian plan. Kind of interesting statement. Did they really expect a counterattack from the Russian side? And after it starting one more attack, counterattack to trap the Russian army, well, it could be potentially, but it all depends on the resources which Ukrainian army is willing to use for this counterstrike. At this stage, I wouldn't be really optimistic about the Kursk Oblast, judging on the scale of the Russian counteroffensive. But the news from Kursk are not really depressed, especially with this uh, Ukrainian strike from the south and the breakthrough of the Russian defense line, which sounds quite good. Also, Zelensky said that Belarus is sending their forces towards the Ukrainian border more and more, but Ukraine controls the situation. And now Ukraine has to protect this entire area. However, there are some of the places where Belarus army will never attack. As for example, in this area near the Polish border, there are lots of the lakes. It is simply impossible to move very fast across this very difficult terrain. Yeah, there are some of the roads, but all of those will be controlled by Ukraine very precisely. And in Jatoma region, you may see the big forest, so the fast assault is not possible there as well. And Belarus army, if it wants to attack Ukraine, after all, it needs a blitzkrieg, so the very fast movement. Guys, I'm not saying that they will attack ukraine here we speak about the possible situations the chance of it is really low and the only possible point for belarus to strike well it could be chernobyl region the place where russia attacked ukraine back in february of 2022 there are many road settlements and this area is the closest one to kiev but again ukraine keeps lots of the reinforcements to protect the capital city of ukraine or belarus may strike in chernigiv oblast it's the variant too well if lukashenko decides to send his army to 
Ukraine, his army will be devastated largely, judging on the difficult terrain and the Ukrainian defense forces used in the Kyiv and Chernigiv regions. Just briefly for the other news, then Blinken, together with his UK colleague, visited Kyiv. We were all waiting for the attackums and storm shadow permission for Ukraine to be used on the Russian territory with a full range capability. However, Ukraine hasn't obtained the attackums permission yet. Even though we had the reports from the American politicians and American media that this question is resolved already, Russia agreed on that too, but for now there is a new information that Ukraine will obtain just storm shadow and scout missiles permission by the United States. It's interesting because those missiles are not in the United States but in the UK plus France. Well, maybe allies will decide because before the White House administration told the UK not to give that permission for Ukraine and hopefully this restriction will be lifted in the coming days. I guess the White House administration doesn't want to be involved at this stage. They'll see a reaction of the Russian side on the long-range weaponry and definitely scalp and storm shadow potentially may have the range of 500 and even more kilometers, which is the existential threat, as Putin likes to say, for the Russian military airfields and for Russian aviation in general. So I guess still those are the great news. For attackums, I think that this question it will be resolved as well and Ukraine will obtain the permission. Meanwhile, Putin decided to comment the issue for the first time himself. I'll tell you what he said just in a couple of moments, but I want you to see his reaction, like the sound is off, and just look how Putin behaves, I mean his body language. Here he wants to say something because he was already prepared to comment the issue. It wasn't a random conversation with journalists, no, it was organized. So here, okay, I'll listen to a question. And he started to look down while he listened to the question. Look at him, he's really, really concerned. And Putin is actually getting much older. I think that after all he thinks about the possible circumstances. So if you monitor the Putin's condition for the last couple of years, he really changed a lot. So he listened to the question, as you can see, and again he stares to the ground. It means that he is very concerned about this long-range missile ratio. And journalists, yes, ask him about the long-range missiles. And what did he say? Well, they expected this move from the United States and allies of Ukraine. And they think that in this case, the allies will be involved directly into the war with Russia. So our duty is to react or counteract to this measure. He didn't say of how he wants to counteract, but he's saying that they'll find out how to do it. Again, more threats from the Russian dictator and the Russian bloody regime. And honestly, I don't see the options for the Russian Federation to escalate even more. I mean, they already strike Ukraine with everything they have, excluding nukes, obviously. But it seems like Putin is not going to use nukes, at least at this stage. They'll probably come out with some of the cyber attacks on the Western facilities. I think it's maximum. And definitely Putin looks sick, and not just mentally, but I think also physically. Honestly, guys, I don't believe in Putin's doubles. I think it's the same person, but he looks really disturbed. Maybe because Ukraine went to Kursk, or maybe because allies supplied long-range missiles to Ukraine, or maybe because Ukraine started the counterattack against the Russian counterattack, or maybe because Russia is not that successful in Pokrovsk after all, because Putin put the deadline to take Pokrovsk till the 1st of October. We'll see how it goes, but I'm sure that Russian Federation will not reach that goal that fast. To other news, Russia continued to strike the civilian ships. This ship was going to Egypt delivering some of the grains from Ukraine. However, it was attacked by the Russian missile. Luckily, no crew members were hurt. However, the ship sustained some of the damages. What's the difference between Yemeni Houthis and Russians? I think that Russia is just better equipped. Many of the Western companies continue to apply sanctions on Russia and now Russians are unable to register their accounts in Google. The Google AdSense is not working with the Russian services and Russian bloggers any longer. So the sanctions pressure on Russia continues, little by little, but it should be intensified to really hurt the Russian economy. Yes, Russian civilians also be hurt, there will be less and less ways for them to earn, that's why many of the IT specialists are now leaving Russia. They are leaving Russia for more than two years already. However, at the same time, Russia tries to change the rails of its economy and work with other countries, like for example China, Indonesia, Thailand, Turkey, but sometimes it doesn't work because companies try to avoid the secondary 
military sanctions applied by the United States mostly and the European Union. Alright guys, now let's review the front lines in Ukraine. As you can see, Russia moved on a major assault towards Hostre. As for updates, it was yesterday and it is today. Quite a massive strike, but Ukraine was able to repel the Russian attack and we have the confirmation about it. Well, here is the screenshot of the video. You can see lots of the Russian equipment is going under Ukrainian fire and this attack definitely was repelled. I'll share the full video on my Telegram channel. Guys, by the way, subscribe for me on Telegram to be updated with the most recent news. At first, I share everything on Telegram and only after that, during the night time, I am reviewing it on my YouTube channel and I usually publish the video during the early morning European time. Plus, you understand the censorship on this platform. That's why I want to avoid my videos being restricted. That's why Telegram is a great tool for me. I can say and show everything I want on Telegram. So here definitely Russia took some of the ground, just temporary. Their main attack faced was just demolished. Everything of that happened in those fields and still you can see that it's a gray zone. If we speak about the red zone, well, it was the expansion, but not as much as for the gray area. So Hostre is still under Ukrainian control. The idea for the Russian army is to encircle the Ukrainian army in this place. Well, actually, they want to make a double encirclement of the Ukrainian forces in two of those regions. It's their usual tactics to advance with the clouds. What can I say with this lower one that there are no any settlements to hold, so Ukraine may withdraw very fast. And here's, by the way, the same Then this road will help Ukraine to move out. I'm sure that the decision to leave this place at least was already taken by Ukrainian military command. In the northwest direction near to Pokrov settlement itself, Russia moved just a little in Horodivka. So it was yesterday and it is today. They've took several of the buildings of Horodivka. And we see one more Russian breakthrough in the Kharkiv Oblast. They want to reach the Oskil River, which is close to Kupensk. We zoomed into the place. This is this Russian attack fist. And you see that for the last 24 hours, they gain quite a lot of the territories, expanding the gray area as well. So I think that they will finally reach this river. It means only one thing, that Russia is capable, after all, to attack at many of the directions of the front lines. Russia is using its all reserves for the massive strikes. They expect some of the changes after the elections in the United States. So they want to take as much territories as possible from Ukraine, especially using kind of the dry period of the year. Yes, in Ukraine it's still dry. The autumn rains usually start in October. Right, cap of words about the American politics. Here Joe Biden wears the Trump's hat, Trump 2024. He actually took the hat from one of the guys who is the Trump supporter and uh, he appeared to be a firefighter. It was a funny conversation with the guy who called Joe Biden an old fart. But anyways, Joe Biden decided decided to put the Trump's hat on top and all the people <laughs> were satisfied around. Kind of the meme stuff here. Well, the idea here is to share the same spirit because you may vote for everyone, but after all, you are American, so it's better to unite the nation. And I really like this comment under this TikTok video, which went popular. The fact that Joe Biden and random Trump supporter can joke around and be more friendly than literally any Democrat and Republican online is actually insane. Meanwhile, after Taylor Swift pop star endorsed Kamala on her Instagram page, around 330,000 new visitors registered to the vote.gov website. We're on this website, so register to vote or update your registration. So Taylor Swift definitely plays a great role, I would say even more than the debates. She has millions of fans inside the United States, also outside, but many of her followers will listen to her 100%. Meanwhile, it looks like Trump is getting a little crazy about the debate results. Then the prize fighter loses a fight. The first words out of his mouth are, I want a rematch. Well, I might be wrong, but Kamala Harris hasn't been calling for that. Polls clearly show that I won't debate against uh, Cameron Kamala Harris. Cameron. The Democrats' radical left candidate on Tuesday night, and she immediately called for a second debate. Well, maybe because the other debates were planned before for October. And you know, the polls clearly show that Trump is not the winner of the debates. Not just CNN polls, but Fox News also agreed that Trump had to defend all the time and he was so focused 
on the same issues that he didn't actually want the polls. Moreover, according to Reuters statistics now, Kamala Harris has the advantage of 5% if you speak about the polls in general in the United States. And here he says again the same old story as he answered on any question I would say on the debates. He always put the agenda about the illegal immigration into the United States. But millions are not criminals, they are refugees. Yes, there are some criminals in them also, but millions? Come on, Trump, it's clearly a lie. Well, more steps should be done to control the situation, but MAGA cult decided not to vote for the border initiative, which was supported, by the way, in Senate. So again, he refers to Joe, 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 Joe. He continued to exploit the old term, I would say. Kamala was now show on Fox debate and refused to do NBC and CBS. Well, here I think is diagnosis because if you abuse the caps lock like that, typing the words in capital letters in your entire sentences, well, it means that something is wrong is better to make a checkup. At least I have those thoughts about the persons, then I see those kind of the comments under my videos, all with the caps lock. Reading this part of the message, I may imagine how he screams with his saliva while typing this post. And here's the bottom line, there will be no third debate, so the debate that we saw was the last one. Awesome! Because we understand who won the only debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Now guys, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot, and as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are, and have a great time.